Hello everyone, we're back with some more FF14. We're gonna to talk to Vanilla and move on. Shall we begin our investigations then? I am acquainted with Hermes, of course, but only a visitor re re received by the chief overseer only as a visitor received by the chief overseer of Alphas. Of the man himself, I only know only that which is common knowledge. Thus I suggest we fall back on the try and true method of conversing with the locals. The observers who live here can surely tell us more of Hermes and Medion, and I have a good idea of where we might begin. Oh, I like the look of this ice. Very nice green color. See you, the woman standing in front of yonder building. Her name is Ismene. She is uh, the one who made arrangements for my stay in Alpes. And from what I recall, she has held her position here for quite some time. Chances are she can provide us with some insights. Go and ask your questions. I will help you draw with drawing out answers if need be, but I leave the choice of topic to you. Questions for me? Well, I suppose I have no other pressing duties at the moment. The following event cannot be skipped. Greetings, Esmene. My friend here is desperately curious about the chief. Ah, uh, Hermes. I was wondering if you might indulge her. Certainly, Mr. Spinot. Anything to be of service? What do you wish to know? Uh, what kind of person is Hermes? Well, I can only answer from my own experience, but... I would describe him as a quiet man, reserved, you might say, and occasionally somewhat poor with his choice of words. His reticent nature, however, does not prevent him from carrying out his duties as chief overseer. The man is wa a walking ach uh, archive when it comes to life forms. He can discuss any species in great incredible detail, and is the leading authority on concepts with the power of flight. I hope that answers your questions. Were th was there anything else? How long has Medion been here? Do you know of Medion's abilities? It's no secret that she is highly unusual familiar. Of late, the chief often makes his rounds with her, like a mother hen raising her chick. I understand that she is able to read emotions and communicate directly with one's mind. Exactly how she was created with that talent, however, is a mystery to me. My apologies, I wish I could explain her nature in more depth, but I've not had the occasion to discuss it with Chief Hermes. You wish you knew him better. Hey, Jeremy. The Chief may not be the most gregarious individual, but he engages with us as is necessary for everyone to perform their duties. I wouldn't want to intrude upon his pri privacy for the sake of curiosity. So if you wish to learn more about Medion, you could try speaking with Timolos, uh, another expert in the creation of cloth line concepts. He should be conducting his observations on the banks of the stream, somewhere to the east. Oh, and, and uh, unless you take a particular joy in rambling discourse, I suggest you keep your questions concise. We shall keep that in mind. Thank you for your patience and your insight. Think nothing of it. If there is aught else you need during your stay, Please, do not hesitate to ask. Come, Mira. I think we've taken enough of this many's time. I don't really need to mount up yet. Okay. Anyway, Jeremy, how are you doing? Welcome. We are in Alphys. Our investigation is off to a fine start, wouldn't you agree? From here, I propose that we split up. I shall continue making inquiries with resident observers, if you could track down the colleague, as many mentioned. Given how you steered the previous conversation, it is plain you need no assistance from me. All I ask is that you watch your footing around the stream. We can meet back here once you've finished speaking with Timolos. I'm never going to speak to Timolos. Hermes poisoned our water supply, burned our crops, and delivered a plague unto our houses. I don't think that sounds like Hermes, but maybe. This dude created a morble, which has this guy in its fucking tentacle. This one's just watching like, hmm, yes. This tentacle does seem to be able to grip you quite, quite fiercely. Be sure not to get eaten. Oh, 
Oh, it's Timaeus, not Timaeus. Yes, I'm Timaeus, but please keep your voice down, you'll startle the birds. Okay. So, what is it you wish to speak about? Is it true that you're an expert on flying creations? What do you think of Chief Hermes' flying creations? Chief Hermes' work? A worthy subject indeed. Those beings would soar through the clouds, majestic and graceful, are ever a favorite of creators. Even now, with so many varieties in existence, the flood of newly imagined concepts continues unabated. What sets the Chief's creations apart, however, is how they benefit from his boundless knowledge of the celestial realm. Birds that climb so high they disappear from view. Others which traverse so boundlessly sky, the boundless sky in moments, and all without riding the currents. I know of none save he who can conceive of such marvels. Even we who prize elegance in form above all else are dumbfounded by his genius. Why not mimic his process? Medion too is a marvel then? My opinion on that matter would be superficial at best. Despite my admiration for Medion as a concept, I would never I've never delved too deeply into the inner workings of her nature. I know that she has a gift for communicating via emotions. But otherwise, her abilities are a mystery to me. If Chief Hermes should choose to submit Medion's concept to the Bureau of Art, the Architect, then will the design be registered for public scrutiny? Analyzing a colleague's creation before that step is frowned upon, to say the least. Of course, he, if he came to me, a fellow artisan, looking for advice, that would be an entirely different story. Do you know of Dynamis and the Intellectis? I could tell you more of Minion's nature, but he just said that would be frowned upon, so this would be better to ask. Dynamis and Intellectis? Those terms do sound vaguely familiar. Was there not a flower made here in Elpis which exhibited properties of one of, or the other? It must have been centuries since I last heard anyone speak of such things. Has there been a resurgence in interest? Then why bring up the subject? I'm flattered that you sought my insight, but I cannot afford to neglect my duties for the sake of idle chatter. Now, I really must return to my observations. Surely you have your own tasks to attend to? Hermes just keeps creating flying creatures that immediately fly into space and suffocate. I mean, that may have been happening, but uh, he is actually creating flying creatures that fly into space. That That is true. You're not far off in that statement. Whether they've been dying, well, I'm sure it's happened because he, he keeps making them. I, I don't think I attended to this. I don't know. There you go. That's where the dynamis went. Die and miss. Exactly. You got it. Back already. That was quick work. You are obviously clever enough to pet head off any of that rambling, as many mentioned. So, have you any new findings to share? I see. Even an expert in the field had little understanding of Medion's capabilities, let alone an awareness of dynamis. My question has resulted in much the same answers. Hermes' colleagues view Medion as his personal project, and could provide no details beyond those which you just told me, which leads me to believe that the only person with any significant knowledge of Dynamis is Hermes himself. Yes, we've made some progress here, but more information is needed if we're to reach any definitive conclusions. Witness to the spectacle. You think Hermes personally created your space well now? Yeah, that was Fusaya that did that. At present, the strongest link we have to the final days is the power of Dynamis and the Entelechies which can control it. Yet most scholars are only vaguely aware of these terms, let alone study them in de any depths, except for Hermes, it seems. Thus, I'm inclined to say our current course and learn all we can about the Chief Overseer and his familiar. And on that subject, there was aught else you to note about Medion aside from the unorthodox method of communication? They're more like her. She has sisters. She and her sisters were created to, to, to journey to the stars and create uh, and search for intelligent life. I rather wish you had mentioned that earlier. In any event, would you care to elaborate? So these siblings of hers now travel the great expanse in search of deeper meaning. 
Thank you. Though the mystery at hand remains unresolved, I feel you've touched on, upon a vital clue. One we should keep in mind as we continue. Next, I propose we take ourselves to Parapete Crystalline. Not far from here. Just follow the path to the west. And then she walks off to the north. Okay. Sure. Hussein, would you date Fisaya? This person made a black cat, a Neko, and a fat cat. North is the new west. They really missed the, an opportunity for Saya be the uh, supervisor of all the law operates. Yeah, sometimes they don't go as far as I feel like they should with their references. That's what people would have some fun with. This tower and the one all, uh, further along are both part of uh, Parapete Crystalline, the facility where they archive all of Alpus's observational and testing records. Despite how they appear from the outside, the interior is actually a vast area of magically interconnected spaces, which, while fascinating, is not the reason we're here, is it? I shall cut my architectural lesson short and see what those two archivists have to share. If you could find someone to speak with over at the other tower, I shall join you there anon. Well, Jeremy, enjoy your work. So I got texted a moment ago that I got to start work early today, guys. So I got to be done before 4.30 today. You have questions for me? Certainly. Just a moment while I conclude my current appointment. Indeed. So if you could provide a comprehensive log of those behaviors, we should have the sufficient data for our official records. Now, what was it you wished to speak with me about? The Chief Overseer's personal research project, and by that I assume you mean Medion? Uh, such undocumented studies are difficult to track. After all, hardly a day goes by uh, past without seeing a researcher trailed by one creature or another. I'm afraid I cannot tell you exactly when Medion appeared, only that she now spends much of her time at Chief Hermes' side. Although I do recall an interesting tale my dearest Galene shared with me. Ah, Galene is my partner, and a fellow researcher here in Asper, Elpis. She was returning late one night when she caught sight of Chief Hermes sending me and Heavensward, a host of them. For several days, she would speak of that scene with wonder, describing it as one of the most beautiful spectacles she had ever witnessed. That sounds like a story I should like to hear. Mistress Vanana, I thought you had already returned to the surface. Permit me to thank you again for your invaluable contribution to our concept placement proposal. Pray, do not mention it. As you say, my original plan was to leave after that task, but I have since become engrossed with Chief Hermes' research. Would you favor me with retelling of this site, uh, which so delighted your Galene? Of course. Or you could hear it from her lips directly, if you prefer. Anyways. At present, she could should be observing a subject at Metabasio Stalasi. She does enjoy her time there, watching the sea creatures hunt and play, gazing upon the salty waters of the world's ocean, recreating recreated in such sublime detail. 
I imagine you must find similar joy in indulging your boundless curiosities, Mistress Mana. Even though such pursuits mostly continue, uh, must continually and regretfully delay your return to the star. Indeed they do. Is a rest well deserved and long overdue, I should think. How greatly have we prospered for the wisdom you accumulated during your travels as a Zam. It's so weird that he's just saying like, yeah, you know, it's great that you're here, but really, you should just go die. <laughs> what would Elpis be without your earlier academic work? The theories you developed served as the basis of many techniques still in use today. Man is a creature of contemplation, but none embody that nature with as much or enduring passion as you. I, I dare say there's not a soul alive more worthy of a return. I shall rejoice the day you depart on your final journey. I will be honored. Well, shall we take this opportunity to meet with Galen in person? Then allow me to reconfigure the doors to the archives here. It will take you up to the Skyway, and spare you the need to avoid hostile concepts on the ground. That would be most helpful, thank you. Also, I just realized Miro's hair matches her shirt. Just have an old ass man that keeps falling asleep and the bunnies that they keep waking him up. Could have waking way, just falling around with symbols, waking him up constantly. <laughs> the other archivist said not, we hadn't already heard, but the story of Galeen sounds promising. I have opened the path to the Skyway. Once you pass through the door, simply walk across to the next tower and ask for admittance to the upper tier. Upon arriving at the upper tier, walk straight across the Skyway and you will find yourself at the entrance to Metabasios the Lassi. Galeen will be eager to share her tale with you, I'm sure. Yay, we're up above now. Look at that. The tower ahead is still part of Parapete Crystalline. We will need to ask for passage through to the upper tier. Mistress Fana just passed them through. Then allow me to prepare the path. If you need any further assistance, there's always an observer or two out on the upper skyway. 80% of the man is beard. Exactly. Messiah can be who, uh started the original uh, mythos of Ralgar and why he took the appearance that he did. Subsequently, why Ramu took the appearance he did. Look at that. I never thought about Ramon and Pesaya could do a buddy cop comedy movie. That door leads into the Thalassi, but perhaps we can trouble this person for assistance with finding Galeen. Mistress Fana, I was not told to expect we should have prepared an official welcome. Please, there's no need for a fanfare. I only wish to speak with Galeen, if that is, might be arranged. Yes, Galeen, of course. I will inform her immediately. Ah, but she may be engaged in a testing phase. You could be in for something of a wait. Should I let her know your business is urgent? That won't be necessary. This lovely view will keep us occupied until she is ready to receive us. breeze and a breathtaking view. What is it like in the future? Is the world still a beautiful place? As beautiful as ever, some parts yes, others not so much. Hidden places rife with danger. Those of an altogether different, but no less powerful sort of appeal. While we wait, will you not tell me about your adventures? 
were not the portentous events which led you here, but the simple delights all your own. By learning about the future world, I may gain insight into future me's plans. But more than that, I have an interest simply as a fellow traveler. Short of going somewhere oneself, there's naught more stirring than hearing another's account. Incredible. <laughs> Would that I could have been there to see it. <sighs> Yours is a harsh and unforgiving world. Yet in spite of this, your brethren hold fast to their virtue. To know that the light of mankind's potential still shines, even in that faraway place, it gives me heart. Thank you for regaling me with your tales. I will treasure every word. As you know, I was once a scholar. And among other things, I sought to understand the workings of the world. What exactly is ether? How formed the laws of nature? When sprung mankind? Riddles and mysteries beyond counting. Over the years, I have managed to find answers to some few of them. Yet rather than attain a sense of mastery, the more I understood, the more I came to hold the world and its miracles in awe. We too are miracles, each and every one of us, born of the warm breath of life that traverses the heavens, swirling through eternity. When I fully grasped the improbability of our existence, nothing felt impossible anymore. If it could be imagined, it could be done. A passion swelled within me, an epiphany dispelling all preconceptions of what was natural and true, and a presence without, immense yet intimate. Fate, perhaps, holding us in its tender embrace. As reassuring as it was intimidating, how keenly aware I became of creation's fragility, built as it is upon precarious happenstance. I was overcome with an irrepressible urge to know the world more intimately, to hear its voice, feel its breath. I ventured forth on a journey that very day, so very long ago now. Freed from presumption and prejudice, I saw the world through a newborn's eyes, everything fresh and new, and so, so beautiful. Lands that stretched on forever, Skies one could drown in, the heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all a people, beacons of light and life, laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning, and my purpose, my love. And so long as they need help, I cannot return to the star. Perhaps my future self is still waiting for it. A moment she can let go and walk unto the end.
safe in the knowledge that man will find his own way. You, who are our future, tell me this, and tell me true. Has your journey been good? Has it been worthwhile? Pray forgive my lateness. My observation subject was rather irritable, and it took a while to settle it down. No need to apologize. Your work takes precedence. Besides, we had a pleasant conversation in the meantime. You're too kind. Now then, I'm told you wished to ask me some questions. Indeed. I have an interest in one of Hermes's creations. Meteon. You witnessed a host of them take flight, yes? Oh, that! Yes, yes, I did. It was in the dark of the morn. I'd left the Thalassi after nocturnal observation. As I walked along, I spied a bright light climbing high into the southeastern skies. Then, in an instant, it was gone. Like a shooting star, only rising rather than falling. But then another shot up, then another, and another. Intrigued, I made my way to the edge to investigate. And who should I spy on an isle to the south but Hermes and Meteon, the Matea, rather? There were lots of them, and I realized they must be the shooting stars that I'd seen. A dazzling spectacle indeed. Have you spoken with Hermes about this? Oh, yes. The sight left such an impression on me that I approached him about his mystery project the very next day. Alas, he said that he couldn't reveal anything just yet, that he needed to conduct further tests. <laughs> it shouldn't be long now, though. He often returns to that isle, and I have a feeling he's nearing a breakthrough. Splendid. We are likewise eager for the details. Well, that is all we wish to ask. Thank you for taking the time to indulge our curiosity. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to speak with other inquisitive souls. Oh, and will you be descending now? If so, I shall link the doors for you. Please. So we heard about Hermes. So another piece of the puzzle falls into place. From what we've learned thus far, I think we can safely conclude that Hermes has been re hasn't been revealing the details of his research to others, which suggests that either someone will appropriate his discoveries and make use of them, or that Hermes himself will have had a hand in the causing of the final days. Since we have no reason yet to suspect the former, we should consider the latter the more likely possibility. Proceeding under the assumption, our next step should be to define why, or even if, he might desire such a terrible fate for our star. Okay, so first off, let's uh, put on our new hat. How does this hat look? Oops. Check that before it. Uh... There you go. Okay, so I don't like this. I like that bird motif though. Go back to the slime hat. No, 
know. I guess technically nothing's changed. All right. Worthy of his back. I should like to visit the site from which Hermes sent forth the media. It, or Matea. If we are fortunate, we might find some hint of what drives his research of this. Ghislaine said she spotted him in the southeast, rising from an aisle she could see from the edge. If we stand at that same vantage point, it should prove too, it should not prove too difficult to locate the aisle in question. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh, we're gonna way out to the other side of the island. All right, off we go then. However, before we do that, let's run into the town here, uh, and then we'll take a quick break. Come back, and then we got about two hours left the stream. Hour and forty, or two, uh, an hour and forty-five minutes, give or take. All right, don't worry, guys. We got more FF14 for you.